Recording. Awesome. So thank you. Welcome everyone to our new Grimoire Lab working session, 21st of January 2020. Um, yes, as a quick reminder from, from the last meeting. So we were discussing about having some open conversation for uh, the goals for 2020 for Grimoire Lab. Uh, so today there are some more people. So it, it might be perhaps for uh, extending the discussion to those joining today. Um, one of the goals that we had during the last meeting were uh, to improve the learning curve for having access to Grimoire Lab. So, well, you know, Grimoire Lab is a compendium of tools, so it's sometimes a bit hard to deal with all of them together. So we thought that perhaps working at the level of dashboard might be faster and easier. Um, then uh, we're discussing about how to build metrics on top of the existing data, bring contributors to the dashboards, and perhaps over uh, the course of a month, try to have like a full dashboard as we had previous experience when uh, Georg specifically was involved in building the one of the metrics that we had for from the evolution working group. Um, uh, the other, the other, the other discussion we had, I remember, was well, and I'm kind of reading as well at the same time. So, offer to uh, to the chaos project as a whole, uh, kind of an open call to everyone to to drive part of the uh, developments in Grimoire Lab at least at the level of dashboards, so we can bring new ideas and topics to the discussion. So. I don't remember who wasn't last. Oh, so we have the name. So last time was Matt Luis Armstrong, Dalian and Alberto. So Kate Manrique, well, Armstrong, you, you left early. So if you have any comment, uh, Armstrong or Manrique or Kate about the, uh, the dashboards or ideas or goals for 2020, it would be good to know because we can have this noted. Okay, I think I saw the notes. It, was, it looks good to me so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just think sometime maybe we can include some use cases in, for example, like what uh, I think it's you, or oh, I've forgotten the, it's Mar Marigo was doing the elastic search thing with uh, Kibana. That was really helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so you mean when we were building dashboards or what do you yeah. mean exactly? Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so this is part of the, I would say, the open discussion on how to bring new ideas. Okay. Um, question I've got is, we're using Chaos itself as a dashboard. And I'm wondering what the policy is for sharing the curated data matching people with organizations. But I'm wondering to what extent we could potentially have the same dashboards being done with separate projects and being consistent. Has there been any thought on that, what, on the policies for that? So if, if I understood the question, so the, mm -hmm. uh, your, your specific comment is about how to share those dashboards and the policy around the data? That, that the those policy, yeah. yeah, so for instance, you know, if I'd like to be able to look at the Augur data mm -hmm. and then also look at the dashboards on the Batergia site for Chaos mm -hmm. and know that they're consistent. Okay. Uh, well, so far, as far as I know, there's no specific policy around this. Correct me, Matt or Georg, if you're aware of any of them. So it may be something interesting to have. Yeah, that that has not come up, Kate. <laughs> <laughs> Situation normal for Kate. Yes, I'm just thinking that you know there's mappings of people to uh, to companies, mm -hmm. and that influences how the dashboards end up looking like. One of the things that when you were talking, Kate, mm. I thought you were kind of going towards, but um, maybe it's not quite it, was the ability to um, just provide a repeatable dashboard mm -hmm. for projects in, in this call through Grimoire Lab um, that projects could just deploy kind of out of the box very, very quickly because the projects function the same. There, that could be useful, definitely. Okay. <laughs> Making it, in fact, that's a really good topic in and of itself. I was more concerned about, like I say, I keep on stumbling against 
Oh, and from Zephyr, I keep on stumbling against. Like I've got one of my, um, one of the people on the TSC thinks he's got his own little dashboard, et cetera. And I'm looking and going like, no, your data is not matching up with what I know the curated data to be. And there's no way, one way of, there's been no real discussions of the matching of people and companies and the curated data, but that's so instrumental in making the dashboards usable. And so it's serving under common as well in my mind too. And I don't mm -hmm. know if we've got policies because it gets into some of the GDPR issues as well. Yeah, that's super tricky. I think in this, case. I know <laughs> because the, not the GDPR stuff, but the way that the data is kind of curated with Grimoire yeah. lab and Augur is different. Right. And so there would be a, a considerable amount of effort that would have to be done to, I understand your point too, to want to map those. Yeah. Well, so I, for Kate, okay, for clarification, you're not talking about analyzing the Augur project and analyzing the Grimoire lab project through the same dashboard where we have the same affiliation data, right? You're talking about having a Grimoire lab dashboard and having an Augur dashboard for the same community and having the shared right affiliation data across those two different Yes, exactly. Systems. Exactly. That's it. like right now, you know, there's the affiliation, there's the, the data that is affiliated with the chaos repos hmm. that's sitting as a Grimoire lab dashboard. Okay. Yeah. And the question is, I think uh, eating one's own dog food is something I believe we all should be doing as projects. And I think, you know, we're, because we've got these two different repos, making sure that they do not contradict each other effectively make some degree of sense and I think and I'm seeing places where I've got a developer sitting in Zephyr who's basically doing it for Zephyr and I'm going to be trying to correlate it with um, what's sitting underneath um, Augur and I'd like to obviously agree more and making sure we have the whole thing to be consistent. Perhaps um, so Matt, Georg and others uh, and Kate what do you think if we try to open some conversation and discussing about around the topic of having common kind of standard files for uh, this, this kind of data consumption. Does it make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a common format where everyone sort of agrees on the format for affiliation. Mm -hmm. Like right now the Linux kernel has got um, their mapping um, being yeah. used for the kernel, the Linux kernel stuff as a format that's being mm -hmm. ingested to do the mappings for various dashboards mm -hmm. and, you know, sort of looking at maybe something along that line and just sort of standardizing on something such that people can share at least. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in the case of Grimoire Lab, which is what I know, and as far as I remember, uh, the, the, the formats we support are, well, the sorting hat formats, which is a big JSON document, but then we are supporting GitDM, um, uh, OpenStack Foundation format, which is, uh, again, kind of a JSON document. Um, then Sorting Hat at the same time, they have like, uh, well, it has like a command line access and API access. So uh, perhaps one of these JSON documents or JAML files that we have from now, where in the Viteria hat that we are using with certain customers might be, might be useful. I don't know if this is something uh, easy to do for Augur, so it's something we can discuss. Mm -hmm. That's, like I say, I was bringing it up and figuring out what the policies are for sharing between projects as well was something I thought was important to figure out one way or the other. And yeah. if, and then basically agreeing on the format. So the Git DM is, I think, what's being used for the kernel. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, uh, just to add something to, to the question that could be interesting, I don't know, for 2020, I'm thinking about uh, how interesting could be a demo of just just sorting hat? I mean, how to store data in sorting hat, how to extract data in short, from sorting hat using mm -hmm. the APIs that sorting hat provides. That could be just ingesting a file or using the Python API or using the Graph, GraphQL API that is being already being integrated. Yeah, uh, I think curating data is one of the key things. Yeah, as a community, we really need to be able to. Make I know, I know. It easy for people to use. You've heard me on this subject for a long time now. <laughs> and so anything we can be doing to make it easier for them to use Grimoire Lab and to curate the data, plus a thousand for me. Yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, I fully understand you and, and 
from the conversation you, you are having and from what I'm hearing, I think that a service like Sorting has itself, not because it's connected to Grimoire, but as itself could be interesting to others to, for example, to connect with to Sorting Hat and use Sorting Hat APIs to ingest and curate the data they have in their own databases. It could be Augur, it could be other tools. Yeah, I just think that, you know, making sure that the, the curated data is accessible to multiple tools um, will basically build up credibility between the tools and between and for the chaos metrics in general. And the other thing that is interesting about the topic is, as you mentioned, the policy, how the, mm -hmm. the data is being shared, because I think with things like GDPR and CCPI, CCPA, on, on, on the field, things are a little bit different, even when we are talking about public data in most yeah. of the cases. But you are adding information like affiliation, where people are working on and, and things like that. Yeah, and I think people need to have the right to be able to inspect their own data yeah. and uh, curate it as they so desire. And then multiple tools use that as a source of truth to be a good thing. I think it will be a very interesting conversation. We are having some ideas here about how to improve that during 2020. So it's going to be interesting. Okay, good. <laughs> good to hear that from you. <laughs> I, might, Thank you. I might recommend two things based on this. One is that um, we carry this conversation forward to the community meeting mm -hmm. just to involve um, folks from Augur. And then Perhaps the first place to think about this is around affiliation data. That seemed to be the mm -hmm. the first issue. Yeah. And kind of cracking that nut first. It's just a proposal. Yeah. What people think on that. Yeah, it makes sense. Okay. I jotted it down. I'll bring it in the meet, the community meeting forward. So if, if we go a bit, um, oh, sorry, any other comment around this topic? Okay. So I was, I was thinking of having some open discussion as well for the other topics. So for instance, uh, we were discussing about improving the learning curve to have more access to remote lab. So for those that are not that use to play with Grimoire Lab and all of these, where do you see that it's that this that this may help? So, so I'm more in the Grimoire Lab side. So, how can I help you to get on board faster? Where do you see that we can help with? So, from my perspective, one of the biggest uh, barriers to Grimoire Lab it's kind of a mental barrier, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's all the pieces <laughs> that are, that are there. It's just, I, I, I know that there's so many parts to this infrastructure. And so I'm kind of getting my head around how they assemble has always been my biggest issue. So you want some pretty diagrams? Pretty diagram or just an out of the box. <laughs> I don't have to, I don't have to care how they assemble something like that. Okay. You know, I, 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 we've got, we've got, we've got a sort of different problem on the SPDX side. So yeah, I hear you. <laughs> Which is, uh, oh, it's too big a spec. No one wants to look at it. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I think I've been like personally been able to overcome it, but I'm just, I'm kind of thinking back as to what that those mm -hmm. first initial barriers are. Cause if I, I would think back, there is a diagram. There's a very nice diagram that kind of that demonstrates all the components. Um, but when you, if you see that diagram out of the box, like having never kind of seen this infrastructure before, so it's, it's, it's a bit overwhelming. I'm wondering almost, do we want something like what reuse did here? Are you familiar with what the reuse software video was like? No. Just a second. They've got a nice little animation that talks about licensing and we want something where effectively we're, you know, putting data through that diagram and you know showing dashboards or something like that i'm I'm not quite sure where this is going in my head i'm just talking okay yeah well and the, i was i'll add i mean the reality is it's not that hard <laughs> I, mean, that's, I, I just that's why i said it was a mental thing yeah so i i've been thinking about this as well and 
what do you think about framing it around the ETL, the extract transform load concept, which is fairly widely recognized for the last 40 years now. And to then say, okay, extract. These are the modules within Grimoire Lab that handle extraction. Transform. These are the modules within Grimoire Lab that transform the data. Load. These are the modules that are helping you load the data. So <coughs> that way we connect the well-known concept of ETL with <coughs> the components in Grimoire Lab and maybe can help bridge this gap. So to extract, transform, and what? What's the last one, L? Sorry, Load. Joe. Load, okay. Yeah. It's a concept from the 80s and often used in uh, warehouses, data warehouses, where you load data from various data sources, just like we do, <laughs> and you have to manipulate it, put it into a standard format, just like we do, and then you provide it to the users just like we do. Yeah, but there also needs to be the aspect of export. I'm, I'm basically reflecting on what you're saying with the context of histology in mind, okay? In the sense that you are um, now, ex you're now, you know, analyzing some source code and making, extracting knowledge, as you say, you could be loading in an SPDX file, you are transforming it and augmenting it, but then you're also exporting. We were just sort of talking about formats to share, so I guess <laughs> that export yeah. is uh, the piece that I think is missing from that analogy from, that you have. Okay. I guess I, I was subsuming it under load when we talk about how do we use the data at that point, but yeah. Hmm. I do think sometimes, oh, go ahead, Daniel. Oh, no, no, go ahead, sorry. I was gonna say, I, I do think sometimes that um, the issue of making Grimoire Lab more accessible, I think it's become increasingly accessible over the years. So I, I do think it's something that is, is just con kind of continually improving. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think software access is an incremental, like you're not just gonna push a button and it's gonna be, yeah. Instantly accessible. So I, I will it's say coming, that there, it's coming. What's that? It's coming. <laughs> Just a button. Well, if you can, if you can do a button, then I will, <laughs> I'll give you a hug the next time I see you. So. Okay. Um, I placed the link to the reuse software in the chat for people. And if you sort of scroll down, there's a nice little video about an hour long that the FSFE put together. And it just sort of shows the concepts, but I've been pointing developers at this site and then I usually don't hear anything more and they usually seem to do the right thing. <laughs> so from a perspective of uh, making it approachable for projects, it's been working from my perspective. Mm. And that little video helps for managers. Yeah. So I'll let you guys look at it your offline time. Yeah, what we've had so far, I guess, in the Marla are people either using part of the tool chain, so for example, Perceval, so mm -hmm. which is the data extractors, they are kind of using that, 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 that specific piece and then they get like uh, JSON documents and then they do anything else. The other way is through using, for instance, the uh, blog post in Chaos by, by Georg for you have a Docker Compose, so people can go there and run the Docker Compose, mm -hmm. which is not ready for production, but you have running something quick. Yeah, plus, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah Physiology is sort of doing the same thing hmm. by making you know, a package set available to people hmm. and uh, you know, effectively test environments to try things out in. Yeah, and, and this, this is the very last place where people are, are more interested in the data consumption, and then they say, I don't care about the tool chain. What I'm interested in is about the raw indexes and enriched indexes of the databases, the data you have and how, can, how I can start playing with this. So then this is the, where people can access chaos dashboard, which is another way. So basically they have access to the data and then they can start building their own things. But they already have uh, 
preset environment then from right. time to time this is well, this is yeah remove and scratch from from uh, start from scratch then so these are the three main places i see so mm -hmm. when building dashboards well it works from a development perspective it seems that perceival and other tools in an isolated work in an isolated way they work uh, when we have to build everything as a tool chain, there are some use cases, but well, not that many. Okay. So the point is about how to increase this. Uh, yeah, how to have a lower barrier for everyone. Okay. okay. Mm. Uh, yeah, then we have uh, another question we have for the uh, recap of 2020 goals is how to build chaos metrics. Um, as far as I remember, whoever took note of this, this is related to how to uh, build in Grimoire Lab chaos or existing chaos metrics as the one we were doing for evolution. Uh, is this right? Not okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. just the process of getting that done. And I guess chaos is just an example here. I mean, really any metric. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so for, for this, perhaps what we can do is to have this open call for everyone and add like a blank space so everyone can have an opinion and add whatever they would like to see. And then start this discussion about where you would like to see uh, I know Grimoire Lab dashboards or the next dashboard or the next discussion or whatever around all of this. And perhaps force them, as this in a couple of weeks, might be a good place to survey the people, kind of. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. So um, I, I don't know if this, if you're also talking about, you had, is this the call you had made for the types of dashboards that? Hmm. Is that this? Because so I've been thinking about this quite a bit, um, and um, I really, I really like the idea of. People can disagree with me, but I really like the idea of dashboards that are um, representative of the working groups, which I think is kind of what Kevin had put forward. So right now we have five working groups, and I think three of them are kind of. Um, trace data observable. So that would be risk, that would be evolution, and that would be value. I think DNI is clearly considerably more difficult and common, you know, I think we use common as a way to, to think about our other metrics. So um, so right out of the box, there's there's three working groups and we've been talking a lot about building individual metrics with uh, Grimoire Lab or Augur. And maybe the better way to think about it is building a suite of metrics. These are the dashboards that you talked about last week. So I'm, this isn't a new idea, but the, the suite mm -hmm. of metrics that are representative of the working groups. I, I, I really like that idea. Again, thinking about it on my very cold morning runs here in the middle of the... <laughs> Um, but it's been, it's, it, I think it's, there's a lot to, to be said about that. And honestly, then I think it goes to an earlier point that was made here that if the, if the open source projects, meaning the, the, uh, the, an array of different open source projects are kind of functioning the same way. I mean, it's these, these dashboards that could be provided out of the box. So, so these are the, you know, kind of that first look at risk or that first look at value or that first look at evolution. Mm -hmm. So I just, I, I really like this idea, Daniel, building on your point from last week of thinking about this from a dashboard perspective, mm -hmm. as opposed to a, just a metric by metric perspective. Yeah, like more, more use case focused. Yeah, exactly. Cause that, right, exactly. Cause then I actually think too, that the dashboard itself carries a use case forward a little bit more simply than metric by metric does. Yeah, actually, I, I like that, Matt. I, it, one of the things that it's sort of crossing my head here when you're saying that though is like the common 
metrics dash like what would that be or is that just assumed under us because i like the concept of doing a risk metrics dashboard and we're sort of doing that with auger right now yep. okay for um some of the projects there but common and i can sort of see that for diversity having a diversity dashboard being a really nice concept yeah, so diversity yeah. would be harder to track down. I know. Yeah. <laughs> but it'd be really useful. <laughs> yeah, I would totally agree. <laughs> perhaps, the, the, yeah, perhaps the DNI dashboard is hard to have. So, so it's hard to automate. So instead of hard to have, I think it's time. Because yeah. you just need to keep, you know. Uh, but, you know, in the sense different. that um, it's useful to have a dashboard up there with the values. The question then becomes that input and output question of how do you import and export data such that you can populate a dashboard that way. Mm -hmm. you know, we were talking the JSON format files, right? Okay, well maybe, you know, how do we have something where people who are responsible for a community can update things on a regular basis without being mined? And so that, that there's that manual interaction with the dashboard on the topics. Yep. Yeah. So in the case of Grumar Lab for the for the uh, data used, I mean for the supported data sources, this is done in an automated way. So this is supported by Grumar Lab. If we go, for instance, for some other place, so let's imagine we want to keep updating a uh, dashboard related that contains all of the diversity and inclusion metrics. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know, a chaos dashboard for, for the chaos project. For the diversity and inclusion metrics from the chaos cons, hmm. and how would you? How would we basically, um, you know, put in the data we're getting from the participants at chaos con into hmm. a visible dashboard on diversity and inclusion for the whole project as a whole? Yes. So I'm happy to <laughs> compile hmm. compile that data for this current chaos con. Okay. But I then, have the registration how, how data. Yeah, it's from the, it's coming from the registration data, but the thing is like, you know, I could see some of the other projects I'm involved with, basically, you know, some of their, pro, you know, some of their community interactions. And so using chaos con itself as a way of sort of piling, how do you go about updating it and how do you get trend lines over time? We could. So, uh, oh, go Kevin. All right. Uh, I was thinking we, we could uh, create a, uh, a standard Markdown template for reporting that data, mm -hmm. uh, and then we could just scrape the data from that file uh, to populate it. I suppose that way, uh, because this is this is the type of data that's going to have to be self-reported by the uh, mm -hmm. by the project or the event, right? So that, that then would go into a nice dashboard. Yeah. For trending. Yeah. And so then my question, uh, sorry for interrupting, Gary. Uh, my question would be going first to what we would like to uh, show in the dashboard. Because one thing is the data we have, another thing is the, so what are we trying to achieve when having this information in the dashboard? I think in the DNI working group, we already have the goals and the questions and the metrics. So this is kind of well, let's say, prepared for this, but uh, perhaps giving a, a previous step that we can do is to work on certain, I don't know, mockups or something that says, okay, uh, diversity access tickets. Can we have like, uh, what, what are the questions we can answer with the data we have? So then we have a specific mockup with, for a dashboard, just for diversity tickets or for, a, for one of the main focus areas, I don't know. And once we have this, then the next step would be like, okay, what's the, da the data we need and the data model that we are perhaps using for this? And once we have the data model, which is kind of similar to the discussion we have, then we can uh, say with this data model, or CSV files or JSON documents or Markdown or whatever, then how this is, this is going to be integrated with Augur or be displayed in Augur and then be displayed in the model app. Do we have any other agenda items for today or can we just dive in and work on this today? So the other, the other topics we had was to keep importing, exporting the dashboard you are still have in chaos for the weekdays and hour of the day. So it has more technical stuff. And the other thing is to start working on some new uh, dashboards that specifically Alberto was working on. 
So, but this is again more technical thing. So, if we all agree, I may go for the open discussion for today. If we finish earlier, we finish earlier. That's okay. What do you think, all of you? I know. I'm fine. Yeah, that sounds good to me. Fine. Mm. So, open discussion around how do we mm. get DNI metrics into our dashboard so that we can start showing. DNI metrics around ChaosCon events on our own dashboard. Is that correct? That would be so great. I, I would go for them for two different goals. One is to define the goals for 2020, that we have some of them. And then if we all agree about advancing in the DNI uh, dashboard or issue, let's go for that. I agree with that as well. But then we have like two up outputs like, hey, well, this is, these are the goals for. Uh, Remote Lab 2020, and we can share this with the community or in the weekly uh, mail. And then a second step, we started with the DNI discussion, and we are having ChaosCon as our, uh, uh, how you say in English, uh, guinea, guinea pig? That's that's the way? I know. Exactly. Yep, we'll be the guinea pig. Guinea pig. <laughs> yeah, I, I, before, um, before you do that, I do have one just quick question. Hmm. Which is um, this is a lot for the folks at Baturgia. So when you're out in the field and you're taking a look at uh, projects or organizations that have data that's being used to um, represent information in the in the tool, um, how much commonality is there between the sources of that information for organization A versus organization B versus organization C. And the reason that I ask this is because if, if we did have a, a hope, or at least my hope, would be that we can provide a kind of a community dashboard or a consistent dashboard that projects can use out of the box. That is kind of premised on the idea that community A or organization A collects data the same way that organization B collects data. Mm. You see what I'm saying? And if we have too much variation in the ways that that data is brought forward, then creating a dashboard that all can use might be really challenging. So it's kind of a question for you as to how often do you see just kind of recurring things like, oh, you use GitHub and you use PonyMail and you use whatever. Yeah, so my uh, my comment here is that any open source project is different from each other. So, the, yeah, and then even when we are working with two projects using, using I don't know, GitLab or GitHub, yep. they even have a different definition for certain things. So, uh, like, I don't know, uh, for commits. So, going to a simple example, uh, there are people that are interested in having branches and there are others that are Yep. They don't care about branches. So then even that definition of commit is different from uh, different projects when they are using the same infrastructure. So the way we usually proceed is you have like a, a, a set of dashboards out of the box and then we understand what you are trying to achieve. So we accommodate, let's say, the metrics, the, the existing yeah. data we already have to your specific business goals and your definitions yeah. of commit, active contributor, uh, process, whatever, these kind of things. Okay. So in addition to what Daniel just said, everyone being different even in how they use the tools, GitHub and GitLab being very popular ones. Yep. Um, and then beyond that, it fizzles out. There's some that use the Atlassian tool stack with Bitbucket, Jira, Confluence. Um, and then mailing lists, even there we have Mailman and Group.io as the main ones. Um, yeah. And given this vari variety, what we do, so we have a bunch of, for each of the, so we have a raw data, which is the data that's coming directly from the original data source. And then we have enriched data, which contains certain creation process. So in, the, in this second set of indexes, what we have is a, uh, a list of 
fields that are all the same across the several data sources. So we try to bring certain um, sense to the data in the sense like, well, if you look, for instance, for all of the author information, meaning author or any, anyone producing any kind of event across any data source, comments in an issue, commits in Git or, or a pull request in GitHub, you will, you will see once and again the same fields, which is author name or author organization name or author unique identifier or the project or similar stuff. So in this way, at least, you can have like uh, common ways of looking for certain data that is once and again the same across the several data sources. And then we go to the discussion mentioned by Kate before, which is this person belongs to this organization, but the real scenario is this identity belongs to this person and this person belongs to this uh, organization. Because as we have different data sources, people tend to use different identities. So then you need to have some identities and affiliation creation process. Then you have the person, then you have the organization at the end. No, that helps. That's kind of the answer I expected, <laughs> which is good, good and bad all all at the same time. <laughs> the answer is good. I I don't know that. Anyway, I mean, I could go on. We can talk about this in the community meeting. But. Yeah, just on a side note, that's what we are trying to do with Coltran, is to say, okay, these are the most commonly used data sources, and you can just start using Coltran to get. Oh, your community report. Okay, because that, that's exactly the question. Like, mm. is, is there something out of the box that at least moves people forward in a positive way? I understand there's nuances that are under the hood, as you were describing, Daniel, like, like mm. commits. That's the one that will never go away. Um, but, uh, um, okay, so you're, you're trying to address this issue with cauldron, sounds like. Like, what are the yep. most common for the most common data sources in the most common. allowing people to okay uh, start analyzing the data to see the most interesting or most commonly used chaos metrics okay and, and you're kind of defining in the cauldron case just the most common is just based on your experience having as an organization having been in the field for quite a while doing this yep. work. These are the things that we continually see over and over and over again. Okay. Hmm. Okay. I probably need to look at cauldron more closely then again to see what those things are. Maybe you should come to ChaosCon. I heard there will be a talk about this. Oh, no. <laughs> I and then you can give me a hug. Why do you have to schedule Chaos? Yeah, all right. the other things because that we have happening that week right there. <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> all right, I'm sorry. For that you click question. a button and you get data. You can give me a hug in that talk. I also give you a hug anyway, Enrique. <laughs> well, Caldron works in that way. You simply add an organization and then you have everything. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for that. Thank you. I just, because I think this is a continually, this is a big problem, not a problem, but this is a big issue for chaos, right? Because as a community, we can only go so far. Um, it's just it. There, there's an end of the line at some point. And so where is that end of the line um, where we can hand things over to people that are of value? Um, but Obviously, we can't do what Baturgia does. That's not, mm -hmm. that's definitely way out of scope for the project. So, mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Um, well, there's only like 10 minutes left for further discussion. Uh, Georg, do you want to start a discussion about uh, TNI or do you prefer to delay this for the next meeting? You had some other thing you wanted to do first. so. Just let's finish that. Oh, no, the, the very first thing that is, so it's, I mean, it's already complete. So we were discussing about the goals. So I was just looking for a volunteer that might be myself as well to send the, hey, these are the goals for the Mar Lab for 2020. Please join us. Any volunteer? You can do it. <laughs> No volunteers. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a wonderful yes. idea. He's <laughs> a guinea pig. 
<laughs> Perfect. I think this is a really nice set of goals, by the way. So. Alberto, I don't know if you have anything in mind. You haven't talked that much. No, I mostly agree with some of the opinions that you said on the talk. Mostly. Uh, <laughs> about having the more lab more accessible. Well, my view from the first day was similar to, to the maths uh, uh, idea of well, we have a lot of projects there, so it's really overwhelming at first. And depending on, on your goal, probably that's uh, a big deal. Because, well, if you just want data, you can go for Percival. But what happens if you want a dashboard? Well, I can get a dashboard. There is no button for that. Well, there is color, but this is a different thing. That Probably that for the first part is my main concern. Uh, having a lot of different projects, separate projects, is good for organizing things. But from the point of view of Grimoire Lab as a product, and I know it is not exactly a product because it's a set of tools, it's difficult to understand what, what we have uh, there. And that for, for the first part. About the rest of the conversation, well, I agree we need to have something more than metrics when we try to to build new things for Gimor Lab. So I think use cases are the way to go and use cases can be a set of metrics or a kind of a suite of metrics for a specific working group in, in chaos. I agree with, with that idea. Kevin also provided uh, another idea in the mailing list, which seems reasonable to me to work on that. And, and well, I think that's, that's all from my side. I think my opinion is basically, we need to, <laughs> to try to improve the initial hit you get when you go to Grimoire Lab and try to get something working. And that's all. Okay, thank you for your comments. So, um... I just tried to avoid to be the volunteer for you. <laughs> Just send it an email. <laughs> um, yeah, so for uh, so I guess probably we can we can leave the meeting uh, now because the next one is taking place in ten minutes. Uh, main concerns I have for the next meeting is on Tuesday. Next Tuesday and the next one I won't be available for this. So, but please go ahead. But because yeah, we I was can... wondering with with uh, sustain and FOSDEM and ChaosCon coming up, I know that a number of people are going to be traveling hmm. during that time. Um, we can cancel the next two meetings. Yeah. For yeah, sure I would almost I rather cancel the next one. I would almost rather just do that, like cancel the next two, and then pick up with these goals when we come back from Brussels. Okay, so then if we cancel well, it, yeah. we, we can do something better, which is canceling those two meetings and trying to have a meeting in Brussels with some beers. After there you go, <laughs> approve. <laughs> um, yeah, perfect. Uh, perhaps uh, are we planning to have well something to discuss during the next meeting? But are we planning to have some chaos lunch dinner somewhere? Well, there's after Chaos Con, obviously that's at the open event, but I don't know if there's anything like official, you know, like during sustain. We're all, I think most of us are going to, a lot of us are going to sustain. Yep. So that'll be the entire day. And then Chaos Con, it'll be beers after, and then FOSDEM. So yeah. we have to those next two days. 
So the for for sustain, I believe they have an evening program. Do they? At least last time they had an evening program. I suspect they have that again this time. And then for for chaos con, I know we don't, but there's the beer 